Hello again and many thanks for joining us in this video. This is episode 27 of Microsoft Canada's online MTCNA program and it is part 1 of our introduction to the DHCP server in Router OS. We'll begin this video with a review of the DHCP client, become familiar with the DHCP server and then give you an example of the process of setting up a DHCP server. In this and a few upcoming episodes, based on our home lab, we aim to configure R1 to carry a DHCP server in order to give out IP addresses to R2, which will bear the DHCP client. As we discussed in episodes 25 and 26, which are available both on our YouTube channel as well as our website, you can add a DHCP client in router OS by determining a set of options, namely the interface, DNS and NTP options, as well as the default gateway. By creating a DHCP client, a dynamic IP address will be given to the interface of your choice. DHCP client also has a few advanced settings that can be modified as additional DHCP options, which we'll discuss later. Also, you have the option of setting the distance of the default route. So for instance, if you set 10 for the distance of the default route, this value will take effect in your routing table. As mentioned before, Microtech routers can carry DHCP clients and servers at the same time, and you can have more than one DHCP server in your router. However, you cannot bind more than one DHCP server to a single interface. For instance, if I already have a DHCP server on the WLAN 1 to class interface, if I attempt to create another DHCP server on that same interface, I'll see an error message at the end of the DHCP server setup process telling me that a DHCP server on that interface already exists. By default, the DHCP server provides some pieces of information to its clients, namely the IP address and subnet mask, net mask, default gateway, domain name, DNS servers, Win servers for Windows clients, as well as some other more detailed DHCP options. One of the most important requirements for a functioning DHCP server is its IP pool, which does not and cannot include the DHCP server's own IP address because that specific IP address has already been allocated to the router itself that will be considered as a default gateway for your IP hosts. You can access the DHCP server window from the IP menu and the DHCP server submenu. To set up a DHCP server on your device, there are a few requirements. First, you need an interface with a network connected to the same broadcast domain of the hosts. Second, you need to define an IP address that is assigned to that interface. And third, you need to make sure that the interface you want to use is not part of a bridge. Well, by opening up the interfaces menu, we can see that our interface that is WLAN 1 to class exists and is enabled. Next, we'll go to the addresses window and make sure we have an IP address assigned to this interface. And now, how about our interface not being part of a bridge? Bridging is the subject of MTCNA module 3, so you don't need to worry about this detour, but we're just going to show you what happens if your interface is included in a bridge. By referring to the bridge menu, we'll create a bridge with the default settings which will immediately show up in our list of interfaces. Then, we'll refer to the ports tab in the bridges window and bind our interface that is WLAN 1 to class to this bridge. As you can see, once WLAN 1 to class is assigned to the bridge, an S flag is shown next to it on the interfaces window. S stands for slave. And now, if we choose this interface for the DHCP server, you'll receive an error message telling you that the interface is a slave. Therefore, if your interface is part of a bridge, instead of WLAN 1 to class, you should use the bridge for the interface of the DHCP server. And as we'll discuss in future episodes, it is also recommended that you assign the IP address given to WLAN 1 to class to this bridge as well. Anyhow, using the undo button at the top of the Winbox window, let's undo all the configurations and forget about the bridge. Now, with the three main requirements fulfilled, 
we can start our DHCP server setup by clicking on the DHCP setup button in the DHCP server window. You will first choose your interface that is WLAN 1 to class that exists in the interface window. Step 2 is the address space, which is the network and the subnet mask corresponding to the IP address given to your interface. Step 3 is the default gateway of our hosts, which is the IP address defined for the interface in use. For step 4, you need to determine the IP pool, which includes the range of IP addresses available for distribution to your clients. The IP pool can be edited in the future and we'll discuss it in detail in upcoming tutorials. Then, you'll have to input the DNS server or servers. Here, we input 8888 as our DNS server that was previously defined in our DNS settings window. And finally, we need to define the lease time that is the lifetime of an allocated IP address, after the expiry of which the IP address given will be changed. We'll also discuss the details of lease time based on the intended usage and network setup in the near future. By pressing next, your DHCP server setup will be finished. Now, let's go over the changes that have been applied as a result of defining the DHCP server. In the DHCP server window, from the DHCP tab, you can first see your newly defined DHCP server on this router. In its details, you can see the DHCP server name, its interface, lease time, and the title of its address pool. For the details of the address pool, you can refer to the IP menu and the pool submenu, where you can see the IP pool range that has been created. Also, back to the DHCP server window from the Networks tab, you have the network related to this DHCP server, which can show you the IP address and subnet mask, the default gateway, and the DNS server of this network. Anyway, with this simple example of the DHCP server setup process, we're set to discuss the details of working with DHCP servers and clients in our home lab. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, Please like and subscribe and do not forget to post your questions and feedback in the comments below. See you next time.